That was a close one. Today we're going to talk about the J11 that had a close run-in with a B52. They got within 10 feet of the B52 and did a rejoin that looks to be relatively unsafe, but I'll give you a full breakdown of that rejoin in the middle of this video. We're also going to talk about why this is going on in the region and the reactions from China and the United States. A Chinese fighter jet came within 10 feet of a B-52 during a night operation, a routine flight from the B-52 exercising its right to fly in lawful airspace. Again, that airspace abuts right up next to China's airspace, but the B-52 was operating in a location that was lawful. And then the J-11 ends up doing a rejoin on the B-52 and it looks to be an unsafe rejoin. Looking at the tape, I can tell that the pilot may have been surprised by the closure that they're seeing as they got close to the B-52. U.S. Indo-Pacific Command from the U.S. Air Force said in a statement that the Chinese pilot flew in an unsafe and unprofessional manner, demonstrating poor airmanship by closing with uncontrolled excessive speed, flying below, in front of, and within 10 feet of the B-52, putting both aircraft in danger of collision. We are concerned this pilot was unaware of how close he came to causing a collision. Now, when it comes to doing rejoins with night vision goggles, this is one of the trickiest things you'll ever do. And if you, have, if you don't do it very much, especially on larger aircraft, judging the size and the distance that you are from that aircraft becomes extremely challenging because at the position that this J-11 was filmed, they no longer have a radar lock. You're just in too tight and too close into the side for that radar to actually keep locked and show you your closure. When you do have a good radar lock in a fighter jet, you can see your exact closure and how far you are from that aircraft and it's really easy to judge that closure to slow down. But in the video, it looks to me like there's some surprises happening in that Chinese pilot's cockpit, and we'll get to that in a second. The US and China both released footage accusing each other of provocative measures in and around the South China Sea, and both countries are saying that these provocative measures are escalating tensions in the area. China released their own statement as well, and they went on to say US fighter jets coming all the way to flex their muscles at our doorstep is the root cause of aviation merit and maritime safety risks. I would disagree with that statement because if you're operating in lawful airspace, then obviously sending up another aircraft to do a dangerous rejoin on the aircraft that is coming in close to your airspace is actually creating that risk. If you didn't do that unsafe rejoin, if you just waited to see if that aircraft would cross your border, then most likely you're going to be in a safer position. And this isn't the Chinese land border. It's an airspace. It's an air identification zone that there's a, basically a buffer in between China and the lawful airspace that you can fly in. So the fact that they're claiming that the U.S. is responsible for this is kind of just misses the point, right? I mean, what came first, the chicken or the egg? You can sit and debate this all day long, but at the end of the day, if you do an unsafe rejoin, you know, if you're the one driving the car that hits the other car, then you're really the cause of the accident and you can't blame it on someone else. But at the end of the day, doing a rejoin with night vision goggles is one of the trickiest things you'll ever do. So putting an aircraft in a position where the Chinese might rejoin on you, knowing that you're gonna have pilots with minimal experience of rejoining joining with night vision goggles, especially on larger aircraft at night. Yeah, you are putting yourself in a position because you know that maybe they're going to do an unsafe rejoin. So while I think the statement kind of misses the point, it does beg the question of putting a B-52 up there, is that actually risking something that we don't need to risk? Could we instead fly like an F-15E? I'm not biased or anything, but uh, I'm a little partial to the F-15E because on a personal note, I think it's one of the perfect aircraft to do that. It carries a ton of gas. You could take off from a lot of different locations in the area, aerial refuel, and then exercise the legal authority of that aircraft to fly through certain airspace. Also, as an F-15E, you're in a position where you can actually maneuver away a lot more effectively should an unsafe rejoin be done on you. And worst case situation, if that pilot decided to shoot down a B-52, now you've got a real incident on your hands. So I'm not second guessing what's going on in the area. I'm sure there's a strategic reason for all of this and I'm just a pilot on YouTube. But at the end of the day, I think having a fighter jet out there patrolling that airspace might make more sense for the United States. And now let's talk about historical precedent, and that's the Hainan incident where a J-8, the predecessor to the J-11, actually ran into an EP-3, which is a signal intelligence aircraft for the U.S. Navy. That 
intelligence aircraft had tons of sensitive material on it and radars that were collecting intelligence lawfully. Same, just like the B-52 was flying in lawful airspace, so was the EP-3. But that EP-3 got hit by the J-8 during the exact same type situation, an unsafe rejoin. Now, people have theorized that it actually wasn't an unsafe rejoin. It was a planned hit because of the sensitive material that was on the EP-3. Now, the EP-3 had to land on Hainan Island, and it was essentially just scooped up by the Chinese. They took all the technology from it, and they used it to build their aircraft that collected signals intelligence in the region as well. So strategically, it made a lot of sense for them to hit that EP-3 and steal that technology. Now, the J-11 in this recent incident hitting the B-52, they're not really going to get a ton of technology out of that. I mean, there's not a lot of sophisticated radars or anything like that, but it would send a strong message that they're willing to take it to level 10, which is, in my opinion, a very unsmart move. So they're not going to be as inclined to ram into the B-52 as they would this EP-3, which with the EP-3, they can have plausible deniability. Oh, we accidentally did that. You know, it's a little bit smaller of an aircraft. And then they're gathering all that information from the different signals collection material on that aircraft. But with the B-52, it's massive. You can't really miss it. So saying that you accidentally hit it, most likely that's not going to fly and it could really spark an international incident where now the U.S. uses military force to basically schwack China and say, hey, you can't do that anymore. And oh, by the way, this J-11 hitting the B-52, my opinion is most likely it's just going to take down that J-11 if it rams into the side of it. The B-52 is like a tank. The thing is like a, a tank on steroids because of the way that it's built and the way that it's been able to operate for so many years. The thing was built in the 1950s and it's going to continue to operate for the next 20 years plus. So you're looking at a 70 year plus airframe, maybe even longer, 90 to 100 year airframe, which is just crazy to think about. I mean, I think about houses that are 100 years old and I'm like, wait, something built in 1910, the way that they built houses and structures back there are strong, but imagine that continuing for 100 years. Now you've got an airframe up there flying with airflow across it, with G-forces on it, with the sun hitting it at really close distances. Now you're in a position where this airframe just really is going to go the long haul. The reason why is because it's a tank. So if you run your J-11 into this B-52, I don't think it's going to go well for that J-11 pilot. And also, you've got the fact that the B-52 is going to be able to most likely limp along further because it's a larger airframe and it's got ejection seats. So this crew could basically crash land the B-52 in the ocean and eject prior to it hitting the ocean, therefore keeping China from getting their hands on it. Now, obviously that's a really bad situation, but that's probably how it would be different than the Hunan Island incident. So at the end of the day, doing these types of rejoins are extremely dangerous and it's definitely apparent that this pilot needs some practice. Let's watch the rejoin now and I'll give you my reaction. So there you go, guys. I can see at the beginning of that, the pilot is in max afterburner to catch up with this B-52. And then as he gets closer, he pops the speed brake, that big barn door on the back of the J-11. Now he's got the speed brake out and the afterburner out at the same time, which to me means a little bit of confusion, a little bit of unaware of what's actually going on typically wouldn't have the in max afterburner with the speed breakout. That just doesn't make sense. But that's what this pilot is doing. So most likely their target fixated on the B-52 right next to them. And they're kind of shocked that they're actually getting that close. Or they really are trying to get within 10 feet and they're directed to do that by the People's Liberation Army Air Force. And they're like, all right, I gotta make this happen somehow. And they're kind of forgetting that their speed breaks out and they're in max afterburner. Something that could happen as well. And then at the beginning, you can see the aircraft kind of check away a little bit because I think this pilot is unaware of their closure rate as they get in close. So obviously a dangerous situation, but again, this is like a tit for tat scenario. Both sides think they're right. This could be a dangerous situation. So in the future, highly recommend an F-15E do this instead, but it's a very interesting situation to see develop and I'll keep you posted as these types of situations occur. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Patreon. It's Max Afterburner over there and watch another one of these videos. That'd be the biggest compliment you can give me. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.